I had a great question recently about creating feature templates that are based on whole feature and how to do placement of those, how to do the points. And, and so I've been found some interesting things that I wanted to share with you. So, uh, we're looking here at NX 2206. So this is the first release of NX feature templates. And, um, here's, here's a couple of concepts that may be useful. When we place a, a whole feature, we use a point to do that, right? And so, uh, we can start here in building the feature template itself a couple of ways. We can do an associative point here, right? And if we do an associative point here, for instance, and say we want to do a point on face and, and, and stick one out here, it's going to give us a bunch of parameters about how to build that point. And it's going to ask us about UV parameters of the surface, for instance, or an offset from some, actually from the selected point uh, out there. That may be a little more complex than we want, right? Uh, so I would not recommend necessarily starting with a point feature here. In doing this a bit, um, what I found is that if I'll start with a non-associative point, right? Again, this is building the feature template itself. And then we'll see how this applies in just a minute. But if I start with just a, a non-associative point here and use that as the starting point, no pun intended, for the whole, then this is the kind of behavior that I see. So here, for instance, what I'm going to do is, yeah, this thread is the one I want to do. So there's an M10, M10 threaded, threaded uh, hole. Uh, I'm going to have a depth. I've got a thread depth that's a little less than that, and, and that's fine. And it's going to subtract from the body here. So it's asking for a point. I'm just going to select this. Um, I do have, I do have my selection intent, uh, filter here set to feature points, but that's not really going to matter. Um, but I'm going to come and select that existing point out there and do, 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 there's the point. Okay. So we get that point. Uh, it's, it's because there's one body here, it's inferring that body and, and having a subtract and, and stuff like that. Um, we'll see how that plays out here in, in the feature template. But at any rate, this is going to put in that, that feature at that point, normal to the body and, and going in 25 depth, right? Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's our, our feature. Now, uh, in, in creating the template here, what I'm going to do is come in to, uh, sorry tools is where I have it, feature template author. And I'm going to just select that whole feature here in this case, right? And that's going to add all of those expressions from that, that whole feature to my template. And what I'm going to do then is look at the user interface and see what this comes up with. So this is on a, another monitor. Let me pull it over. There we go. Uh, so this has given us, by default, of course, the geometric references that we need to resolve to place this, this threaded hole. This curve one is, is not the best name. <laughs> this is uh, looking, as you can see from the icon, looking for a point here, right? It's looking for a single, a single point at the moment. Um, the, uh, so what we can put here, actually, I'm going to put in, instead of curve, I'm going to put in points like this because a cool thing is going to happen here. <laughs> um, we're actually going to be able to select multiple points here in just a minute. Okay. The target body here is, is exactly as, as labeled. Uh, that's going to be our body that, that we're going to, uh, of course, uh, subtract the hole from. And just because we can, I'm going to add this depth here as well. And we'll leave, oh, let's put that below this other one. There we go. And yeah, this is going to be our whole, whole depth here, right? So, uh, we've got that. Now, on the main dialog here, let's call this our 10 millimeter threaded hole, um, <laughs> template just for fun. Okay. There we go. And, um, it's going to save that into a, a little testing folder that we'll see there in just a minute. So with that, we've got a name. We've got, we, this is the, the name at the top of the dialog. This is the name of the file. This is where it's going to go, uh, in, in my file structure. And again, we're going to pick our, um, uh, and this name of this group here, we can change if we want to as well. This can just be something like parameters. Um, what this will do here now is, is have us pick the point or points. It turns out, um, we can pick the target body and then adjust the depth, uh, with this. And uh, with all that in place there, we're going to go ahead and finish. This is going to actually save it into the reuse library. 
So this is that testing folder. And this starts with 10, so this is probably going to be at the very beginning. And uh, we'll say finish, and then I'll think about it for a minute. And sure enough, there's, uh, there's the new one, okay? Uh, and if we want to, we can uh, open that, for instance. And I could have done this there as well. Um, and just for fun, we could do something like that and save it. And that'll give us a, a preview image that's a little bit better than what we wanted. Okay, than what we had before. So with that, um, I'm going to close the template part there. This is just our original construction part. We're not really using this for anything. And this is this is a, a target part here that has a bunch of different kinds of holes on it. <laughs> or, sorry, a bunch of different kinds of points on it. Um, in this part, we've got uh, a couple of non-associative points. These are just kind of like the one that we created it with non-associative ones out there. In fact, I'm going to add one more of those just for fun. And let's do similarly a point on face that's non-associative. And I want to stick it over kind of in the middle of this face here um, in a, a non-associative way. So I want to get one with a different orientation there. Okay. So we've got some non-associative points. We have a point on face. So this is an associative feature point on face here. This one's a point by expression. Here we've got actually an XYZ expression, uh, point expression that's driving the location of this point. Um, this set of four down here on this face are a point set that are a feature that's created using UV parameters. These are at the 70s and 30s of this of this face down here. And then we've got a set of points over here that are driven by a sketch. Okay. So with all of those in place, uh, and this is kind of the testing part, the catching part, <laughs> right? Um, let me go ahead and save that as I added that new point just now. Uh, let's see what this does. So if we come to the reuse library, we've got our new, uh, our new whole based feature template here and we bring that out. This is going to ask us now for a point or points. And, um, th this is going to have us do a single point right now, right? And, uh, I, I'm remembering the other step that I'll need to do. So if we do it just like this, this will do a single point. I can grab one of those that's one of those non-associative points and it'll do that just great. Uh, I can come and similarly do a non-associative one in this orientation and that's going to be just fine, right? And I could come and grab one of the sketch points if we wanted to over here, right? And that similarly is going to be just fine in that orientation. But this is forcing us to call, to select a single point all the time, right? And specifically, the question I got was about how can I how can I do this with multiple points, patterns of points, and, and so forth. So let's go there. Uh, I'm going to undo this a few times and get rid of those instances of the of the feature template. And I'm going to go in and modify the feature template just a little bit. Okay, so let's go to that uh, feature template testing folder. Oh, we're here already. <laughs> we'll come here and I'm going to edit this feature template, actually. So this is going to launch me back into the, the, uh, the, the template studio author. And uh, I'm going to make one change here in the user interface. And that's here at the main dialog level. Right now, this is uh, what this is doing is exposing the direct parents uh, of this feature. And what that means in this context is that we had a single point that we had selected as the parent for this feature. And so it's direct, it's exposing that direct parent. And so the single point is the thing that it's looking for as we go to, to reference that, uh, that particular input. Now, what we can do is take this and say, instead of the direct parents, that we're going to expose the intermediate parents. And what this is going to do is step back up kind of one level and give us the point constructor now. And in this case, even it's a section constructor uh, that's going to let us select multiple points instead. Okay. Now I'm going to rearrange that and put that up here at the top just so it looks, uh, looks similar. And this is where I want to say points, <laughs> right? Because this now is actually going to let us do that, which is pretty cool. So uh, we've got uh, the multiple points here. We're going to have our body. And with that in place, again, the main change we made there is, is changed it from the immediate single point parent to, to step back a level. And this is going to give us a collector now that we can use to, to choose how we're going to define our point. And, uh, and as we do that, we will go ahead and finish this. This is going to finish the uh, the feature template there, and we'll save the, the part here. So then we can redefine our, our template part out there. So let's go back to our, and go ahead and close this, and you don't have to, but it will. 
um, this will go back to our target part here. And let's see how this behaves differently now. As we bring this out and drag this out now, here now, you notice we have the selection intent now for points out here too. So we can use a selection intent rule now if we want to, to get a single point or feature points, for instance. And, uh, and feature points is going to be really handy for us here in just a minute, right? If we do want to do a single point, we can still do that, right? And the important, <laughs> I keep wanting to say point, the important point here, no pun intended, is that, uh, that this is also going to be doing an associative, um, connection to the, to the target point. So for instance, this one is our point by expression out here. If we choose this one as our target, uh, again, grab our, our target body, then, uh, we're going to get that, that point at that location. If we come out and look at our expressions here, I do have this point and we change that expression, for instance, from 50, 80, 50, the 50, 50, 50 to 50, 80, 50, that will move this hole up to, to the 80 millimeter position, uh, up there, for instance, right? So it's associative here, of course, to our, our, uh, in inputs as we would expect. The other thing we can do here now is start to do that with um, the sets, right? So interestingly here, we can come and say, I want to grab feature points now and use this point set by UV parameters. So this is this guy down here, these four that are part of this um, feature set. And this one, or point set, and I'll grab that same target body. And this now is going to do all four of those for me, right? Use leverage the collection of points that are in that point set and uh, and add the holes, okay? And this is going to be associative as well. So if we go back to this point set, for instance, and take one of those, and uh, let's take, say, that point right there, and we want to move that instead of being at 70-30, we'll have that be at 70-50, right? So it's going to scoot that point over from the 30 U, uh, or which one was it, V percentage, <laughs> to, to the 50 V percentage. And, and as we do that, of course, uh, our history will continue on and our, our points will come along for the ride. Our holes will come along for the ride and follow that point, right? Which is pretty cool. Uh, similarly, we could come in here and say we want to put a, that was at 70-30. Let's go ahead and put in a, um, which one was that? That's at 70-50. So let's put in one, a, another one at 70-30 where the previous one was and we'll add that point. And, uh, and as we say, okay. That now, uh, I think I edited another one, <laughs> but anyway, you get the point. We can edit and, and rearrange those, and uh, and and those will those will come along for the ride as well, right? Uh, what have I got there? I've got seventy seventy. Yeah, I've got two at seventy thirty right now. So I need a yeah, I do need a thirty seventy. <laughs> so let's do a thirty. 70 there. Yeah, there we go. So adding a point works as well, right? We've added a point to that, that point set and that's, that's added a hole, right? So those kinds of things are, are going to be associative. I can take that 70, 50 and delete it. And we're back to our original four. Now the last one's the sketch one here, right? Similarly, I can go grab that same template, bring in that one again, choose the, the feature points here. And, and as I'm choosing the feature points, I can choose that sketch and it'll grab those points from the sketch. Uh, again, target body, new orientation, of course, this time it'll infer that and, uh, and similarly be able to put those in. And if we come into the sketch here, for instance, and say, uh, delete that hole, delete that point and put in, uh, two more right there, for instance, right? <laughs> so we've removed this one and added two more as we finish there. We'll, we'll see that, uh, uh, that, that that'll come along and update. So let's go there. Do you want to review these? I'd say no. There we go. And there we've got uh, those two holes now instead of the one. Okay. So that works really well, right? If we go and define that uh, original one uh, using a non-associative point and then step it up the level and expose the intermediate parents in, in the author tool, that gives us a ton of flexibility as we go to instantiate a new hole. So with all of that said, I hope you find that useful.